Manchester United, just listening to, to Kenny there, the, the Manchester United fan who was on, um, I think it was on Talk Sport, wasn't he, yesterday, having his little rant. Um, every single United fan always talks about the transfer policy of the club. Like, oh, this, is, this has been a disgrace, the transfer policy. It's been, it's been awful. Yeah, every single summer I look at who they get in and I'm like, oh, God, Man United are doing well here. Yeah. When they got Casemiro in, I was like, wow, it's, it's a good signing. Mm. Then, you know, they were getting excited about Anthony, overpaid, but they got excited. They certainly went crazy about Jaden Sancho. Mm. They they were ready to kick out David De Gea. Get rid of him. Get Anana. Yeah. They, they got their guy, Anana. The Mason Mount saga. They wanted Mason Mount. They seem to get the players. The, the only one I say they haven't really got is that number nine, right? And that's not the, that's the one they haven't got, Oshman or Kane. But everyone else, they seem to still get them. They still seem to spend mm. big money. I, I understand the Glazers' argument. Glazers, you know, using the club's money to fund the transfers. But they are still getting the players on the pitch that they want. So who are they blaming here? No, I agree. I agree. If you if you look at the team that Eric Ten Hag had available to put out against uh, Brighton, yeah. let's use that game as a case study, the team should have won the game. Yeah. He had a team that was totally good enough. And I like Ten Hag generally. Mm. I've been a huge backer of his. You know, I flagged quite how well he did last season, you know, getting Manchester United back into the Champions League, getting them to two cup finals, winning a trophy. All of those things are significant. And I think there's a lot to say that he has done things well. However... It's going a bit wrong. And mm. he really isn't helping himself at the moment. You know the way he speaks? I feel like he makes so many errors, just the things that he says. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if you heard his, his interview, one of the things that he said post the Brighton game. He said something about, well, Brighton spend money too. Now, hang on a minute. That Brighton team cost £16 million. Addy, you and I were having a conversation off air, and we were sort of jokingly, almost, almost sardonically, having a chat about what that would buy. Yeah, their, their entire team was equivalent to Dallo, wasn't it? Isn't yeah. that what we established? Yeah, yeah. Dallo cost four million, a more. quarter of the price of Jaden Sancho. Yeah, that, that, the, the entire the entire team, eleven that battered Manchester United cost that. Yeah, was Dallo. Mm. So, so look, it's all very well for, for Eric Ten Hag to acknowledge the things that he's done well, and I do do that. You know, the handling of Ronaldo, whatever else he's done it okay, but he's getting it wrong now, and the way that he's talking. Is, is weird. You can't talk. You can't talk about money with regard to Brighton. Yeah. Like that is just baseline. Yeah, that, that's yeah. That's just like schoolboy era. Exactly. School. I, I I feel sorry for him. I almost feel like the job's now too big. But there's only a couple of managers in the world that I think could handle what's going on at Manchester United, both off the field and on the field. It's it's, it's almost too big for one man, mm. um, especially a man that's come from the era of easy where you just didn't have the the eyeballs on you like you do at Manchester United. Yeah, but all of that's true. But he's not helping himself either. Mm. Like, did you hear, you know when Garnacho scored that goal against Arsenal? Yeah. And he started talking about the, the fact that VAR used the wrong angle, the wrong camera. Like, that's not it. That's, that's a chat in the pub. That's a chat in the pub. But that has nothing to do with the offside. They haven't used the wrong camera angle. It's a conversation about what the definition of offside is today, or perhaps he doesn't even understand what it is. And that is a legitimate thing to say because it's become so warped and so murky trying to decipher exactly what VAR are doing and exactly what offside is. You can say that. But he's, he's off the back of the comment about Brighton, he's then talking about using the wrong camera angle if that has anything to do with it at all. Yeah, and to add to that, obviously it's come out now and look, United staff, and we, we don't know where these rumours are coming from, but United staff are concerned about the influence of Ten Hag's agent, uh, Keith Voss, um, who is his friend, uh, mm. who's bringing players to the club. So it's just, again, it's more drama added on to more drama added mm. on to more drama. And it's okay if you're getting results on the pitch because everyone seems to forget the problems off the pitch, yeah. don't they? When you're getting battered on the pitch and then you're having this drama off the pitch... But they're, they're all over the place. No. They, they are all over the place. So, so the only way that you can make excuses for Ten Hag, and I don't think that we need to be generous here, I think that when Ten Hag has done well on this show, you and I have been very complimentary. Of course. At one point, we said he had the Midas touch. Everything he touched turned to gold. He was doing a, it really as, well. As it showed last season. As it showed. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, they went on a run. There was, there was a very impressive uh, period where Eric Ten Hag was getting everything right, Did but that isn't I now. I remember messaging you, and I think this was prior to Elise's goal against Crystal Palace, yeah. and I was like, oh, dude, I looked at the table. They're five points off City. Yeah, yeah. They, at Title one charge. stage, they were close. Title and then, charge. Yeah. And, then it, and then it went to pot. Yeah. There is an argument, however. Is it the impossible job? It's one thing after another. It's a soap opera. You know, if you think about what has gone on in that club, even in the last two weeks, mm. everything, even everything on its own, everything in isolation, I think you could just about rationalise it. You could just about make it work. So if the only problem at the club 
was Jaden Sancho taking to Twitter to air his grievance with the club? You could just about make it work. If the only problem at the club was the Anthony debacle, mm. you could just about make it work. If the only problem at the club was the injury crisis, you could just about make it work. But it feels like it's just this perennial problem. And then it, then you start asking the question, maybe Eric Ten Hag is doing a good job, maybe he is the right man for the job, maybe he's doing everything right, and the job actually is impossible I just argue that he's making it harder for himself at times. Yeah, uh, look, maybe so. Um, again, I don't know if any other manager can can handle what's going on at Manchester United. I want to sort of reverse and, and speak about the influence of Ten Hag's agent friend here, uh, Kees Voss, who, who's brought in Hoyland into the club, brought in Amrabat to the club. The Hoyland one's the one that I question a lot just because of the push to get Hoyland to the club. And me and you were looking at Hoyland's record and we've been speaking about it all summer because mm. we obviously had the transfer show. And this guy got single-digit goals in City R, mm. but yet cost nearly 70 million euros. Mm. And there was a big push to get him into the club. Now, conspiracy theorists are going to you know, gonna wonder why now. Once they realise that there is a connection between Ten Hag and the agent and the agent friend trying to push to get, Hoy- get Hoyland to the club and Amrabat to the club and get Harry Maguire out of the club, there's going to be there's going to be a bank account. What, yeah. We're going to find a bank account in the in, in the name in, of the yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I mean it's murky. It's murky, it, isn't it? It's murky. It's, it's murky. It's murky. Yeah. I mean there is there is also a conversation to be had around signing so many players that he already knows. I mean there is a justification to that. Sign players that you've worked with before. You have a relationship with you. And have a pre- for huge fees. Yeah, Anthony, huge fees. I saw an amazing stat comparing other top managers. Mm re-signing players that they've worked with before I mean you know Ten Hag has done it on countless occasions yeah. already he's done it more time than the rest of the top tier managers combined really? yeah yeah it's just not a thing it's, oh, I, I mean I think you could he's argue trouble, he? you know you know, like it's not a thing I think we kind of assume that it is because when not, it happens it's, it's not, not a thing it's not a thing like when Jose Mourinho went to Inter he didn't sign John Terry did he yeah. you know it's not a thing yeah like when Klopp came from Dortmund's level I expected him to sign everyone at Dortmund yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, do it didn't happen didn't do it so I mean I, th- I think Guardiola has done it like once it's mental, that, yeah, isn't it? it's yeah. not a thing. Whereas Ten Hag, Ten Hag's done it. So no, this is just this is just another thing. But I also think it's important. And obviously, what we like to talk about at his football—that's what we love. That's what we do. That's what we spend our time discussing on and off air. Let's remember that it's it's almost a poison chalice, the job, because it's such an amazing job. It's an mm. opportunity that you have to take. But if you think about all of the managers post Alex Ferguson, right? You're looking at what Moyes, Van Gaal. Mourinho, like think about how yeah. many trophies they've managed to to accrue, all yeah. of them, right? So mm-hmm. it goes what Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, Solskjaer, Rangnick, Ten Hag, Ten Hag, four trophies. Mm. He's got one of them, and he's only been there a year. Mm. Maybe he is doing a good job. Maybe we set the bar too high. And, and you know how we were talking about the transfer at the, at the beginning of this segment. You flag, yeah, they do sign good players. They do, and you're right. But think about. They wanted to sign Amrabat. They couldn't, and they've ended up having to get him on loan. Realistically, if you think about the dream signings, it wasn't Hoyland. I mean, they can spin it that it was, but it yeah, wasn't. It was Kane. Was Kane. It was yeah. Kane. Mason Mount, I think, is a good signing for them. They got their goalkeeper choice. Don't do this. They got their goalkeeper choice. They did get their goalkeeper choice, yeah. yes. But they got rem- Varane. They got Lissandra But remember Martinez. everything they got going... Those okay, they okay, but... Jadon Sancho... Mason Greenwood, fan protests, Glazers, takeover from the Qataris. It's, it just feels impossible to me. And while I concede that Ten Hag is getting it wrong, there, there seems to be this very thin line that, you know when you critique a manager, people go, you want him out. And, and it's not that. Mm. I, think, I think that we can have a conversation. Look, I'll make it about my own club so people don't think I'm being tribal. I think Mauricio Pochettino is making a pig's ear of it at the moment. But I certainly don't want him sacked. Mm extend the same courtesy to Eric Ten Hag I think he's making a pig's ear of it at the moment but at the moment I still think he's the best man for the job I don't think he has the stature to handle the problems even on the field like but, players but by that like, realistically like, like, who like does Jaden Sancho if he plays for Liverpool doesn't dare pin that tweet doesn't even speak like he's never playing for Liverpool again yeah. do you know what I mean never played for, and we've seen we've seen um, we've seen Thingy do it Guardiola with good players, Cancelo not playing, at, don't want you at the club again. Yeah. Any little, any little hint of yeah. disruption. Leroy get out. Sané, you want to go, go. Fan, Despite go. the fact that he was mustard, as unbelievable. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Want to get out, get out. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Klopp you did, don't have Klopp that luxury. Sacco years ago, defender for us, France international. Yeah, yeah. He went Palace. He went Palace. Had a little bit of an attitude. Never played for Liverpool again. Yeah. Never played. You just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. And it, these players feel like they can do it with Ten Hag. 
But they feel like they can speak out and say things. Do you think that's a Manchester United problem rather than a... I think that's a Ten Hag issue. But Ten Hag has been a disciplinarian. He has extended the same courtesy to every player. So when Garnacho was late in training, uh, in pre-season, missed a game. Yeah. When, when Marcus Rashford was one minute late, mm-hmm. one minute late for a team meeting, didn't start against Wolves. Uh, when Cristiano Ronaldo threw his toys out of pram and went on a Piers Morgan Adios. interview. Yeah. Adios. What more? He, he's been a yeah, disciplinarian. What, yeah, what can you do? He's been a disciplinarian. He's he's then, you know, this whole Sancho saga. If Jaden Sancho had just kept quiet for about one more day, he'd be the starting winger now. Yeah. So who's who's wrong, really? Eric Ten Hag voiced his concerns oh, I, about... I said Jaden Sancho. Mm. I said Jaden Sancho. But what more can Ten Hag do? Don't I'll tell you what, they're going to get battered by Munich and then... Then there's going to be some yeah. serious questions. Harry Kane hat-trick incoming, isn't it? See how much he likes playing against Maguire then. 